Keller, what a privilege. Thank you so oh, much nice. for taking My some pleasure. time. <laughs> and My pleasure. I'm so excited to hear about your new project here in Las Vegas, Secrets of a Chef. Yes. Hashtag love me Las Vegas, by the way. That's correct. And we want to hear more about how this project came about. And in the past, you've done such an exemplary job showing us all your wonderful culinary skills through the PBS uh, television series. And we want to know how you've taken that concept, but now you want to showcase what is really going on here in Las Vegas. We are such a culinary city. We are, I consider it an epicenter yes, of the culinary are. world, and it's continuing to grow. We're going to have all these great sports teams now, so we're going to have more people coming in looking for different types of culinary scenes. So tell us about your show and how it came about and you know what you right. hope to have it come to develop and okay. what you want people to see. Well, right. what I feel about is like, uh, and if I get the like, question asked, how do you feel about yeah. Las Vegas right now? Right. I, I really think we are the best time ever right, right yes. now. And it's gonna get only better from here. Mm -hmm. And since we talked about uh, a culinary destination, I feel like uh, one thing that was a little bit missing in, in Las Vegas to really wrap it up was we always, I mean, for the last 15 years, right? It literally became uh, a leading restaurant city, and and I remember I was part of the early on when 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 I came to Las Vegas, yes. right, opening up Lourdes here, and I, I do remember, and that's like a true story. Do remember, 16, 17 years ago, uh, some chefs mentioned to me when when I announced that I would open something in Las Vegas, their motto was like. The losers are going to Las Vegas because ah. if you cannot handle another city, you go to Vegas because there it's always busy. You're always going to fill your restaurant. That was the attitude. Right? I think 16, 17 years later, today, if you do not have your name on a restaurant in Las Vegas, That's you are true. like considered like a loser, right? Because you never made yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So it's an incredible how things have changed overnight, right? With uh, lots of effort, lots of work, lots of everything, right? And today we are that leading restaurant city, but if I would compare it to like San Francisco, which where I was for so long, right? I think the, the only thing that we were missing here is also off the street restaurants, right? And I think that move, because in, in San Francisco you have the, the leading restaurants and you have lots of neighborhood restaurants and avenues everywhere. And that made that city such a good restaurant city. And I think Las Vegas today, that's what we have, right? With the chefs that have worked for us, they have worked in casinos, they have worked in restaurants, now found investors who are believing in them and they're opening restaurants off the strip. So in the show, I really wanted to emphasize on that part because that really closes the circle between the leading restaurant on the strip and also having those amazing chefs, those amazing restaurants, right? Mm -hmm. And not everyone yet, especially coming from other cities, when they're coming from the United States, they, they visit Vegas, not everyone is familiar with some of the restaurants. And I think hopefully by watching, the, looking at the show, I, I'm gonna show them some new addresses, new places to go, oh. and I think it's a win situation. I right? think that is really needful because uh, I know as we go forward, we're always telling people, hey, this chef that used to be here now has this wonderful venue. So how did you pick the certain venues that um, were chosen for the program? So it, it is a good question, and it mm -hmm. probably was the hardest uh, yeah, so to, to do. Yeah. Really <laughs> difficult. yeah, because I have uh, lots of good friends, uh, right. good friend chefs. Not everyone had made it uh, into that show. There's only right. so many we, we made to, to wrap up the segments. And I remember with uh, Marty Poor, which is the producer, when we sat together and we talked about the list, and I made my list, and then Marty would look at the list and say, you know, it's not just a strict French show, right? It's like I had more French restaurants in there. <laughs> so, so I joke, and we really worked very well together with Marty. So we, we had to diversify, right? And showing different kinds of cuisines, chefs. So, it not, unfortunately, not everyone made it to the show. Some of them that I really would have loved to be in there. But obviously, I think we showed showing some some of the best ones, and hopefully, maybe one of those days we're doing another one. In, in Vegas, but and then the ones on on the strip, in the in the casinos, uh, there's so many to choose from, right? And so many great restaurants. And again, so I felt like it was more like picking 
restaurants where there was like a real connection in matter of when we talking about for example the Eiffel Tower uh, with Jean Jo we used to apprentice together in France in 1970 in the same restaurant and then so many years later we are here in Vegas yes, right Julian right. uh, Serrano uh, when he was in San Francisco we were friends since day one and then I remember when Julian came here to, to Vegas right and then, and then when he also was a chef at Massas so we were actually real competitors right you were like the two leading restaurants in the right. city but always in a very friendly way mm -hmm. so that's how then I, I picked a few of those restaurants where there was the personal connection wow yes and I'm sure there's some joy in that because when you have all these inner connections were there any real surprises like you were like wow I never knew that that is just phenomenal like was there anything that really delighted you, surprised you in a way that you hadn't seen before doing yeah. this? Mm -hmm. Not, not really, because I, since we talked about the restaurants, I've been in all those restaurants, okay. so I knew a little bit what we're going to be walking in, and, and I kind of envisioned what it will bring to the show. But I, I think there's one exception, and uh, which is in the show, uh, is uh, the idea is everything we showed, people when they're visiting uh, Las Vegas, they will be able to experience it. Even like uh, the Academy, right, and, and the Southern Wine and Spirit, right, which is amazing and it's open to the public. One thing they probably will not be able to see, but I really wanted to have it in the show, is at the Venetian, the backstage, where they do all the banquets and the big parties. Olivier Dugoy, first of all, is a good friend of mine, and he's like an amazing, amazing chef. And uh, I think when people come to Vegas and they're hearing about those big banquets, 8,000, 10,000, 15,000, yeah. <laughs> they're probably thinking it's totally mass feeding, right? Right. And when you see in the show, and Olivier Dubois was really so dedicated to show us all, yes. and we filmed everything, it's absolutely, I mean, even today, I'm like blown away, right? Yes. Because the first time I saw the kitchen and what goes on in there, everything is it's like made, an orchestra, right? <laughs> made in house, uh, right? Yeah. I mean, they have like that when they're cooking a sous vide, they have that machine. I mean, it's like a crane where the thing comes in and oh the meat, my. the meat is loaded with a crane in that big. I mean, things yeah. like an eye opener, right? Wow. So I think we were able to really add that into the show. Right that when a viewer sees that, and probably even when you are in Vegas and you see the show, if you've never seen the back of the house, mm -hmm. you have to sit back and they said, it's like amazing, amazing production. It is. So that was kind of fun and that would be a surprise. And then- uh, nice. <laughs> That sounds like it. Oh my gosh, actually, uh, yeah. That, that's yeah. the after parties are always great. <laughs> that's right, yes. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for your time. Oh, you're always coming. such an inspiration and the joy you exude and your passion. You just feel it in everything you do. And I want to thank you and thank the PBS. Thank you,